If y'all can hear me, is that better? Move this a little closer to me. We're doing uh, another test to see if the setup I have is actually working. Hey guys, um, I've improved my lighting and some of my sound and my video a little bit. Y'all let me know if um if this is doing okay. Hey, what's up, guys? I don't always see right away what y'all are typing. How's the sound on this? I can't really see the sound. Maybe I can try to turn it up a little bit. Is that any better? Well, I'm glad it looks a little bit better. I've um, improved my lighting. I guess I could show you the setup I have here, but it's um my office is a mess. I'm not going to show you around my office. Good morning, guys. I figure we try something on Saturday because during the week we um most of us are busy. Even if it's slowing down this time of year, I'm I'm still kind of busy. But yesterday was a little bit of a rain day, and I have a um a video from my rain day that I'm going to post just a little bit later on. Sound is pretty good. So the video is better. That's good to, good to know. Let me see if there's a way I can turn this up a little bit. Is that any better? I, I can't tell how this... I just see a little graph here. Yeah. Oh, I got a whole new light. And y'all are saying, get a little better lighting face in there. Yeah. Well, the, the light's actually over here. If I turn and look at you, and maybe I need to put it, find a way to put it up above this screen here. Very good sound. Sounds fine. Thank you. Well, guys, I do have a time to do just a few questions or talk about what's going on in the industry. One of the things that was really bothering me lately is I went to a rude class and y'all know I'm a rude dealer. And they told me that the stock equipment that I have in my warehouse, I couldn't register it come next year because of these new ratings they're going with. And if you know about these new ratings, they're going to start rating the air handlers for, for 0.6 inches water column before they were rating them for 0.2 which was just unrealistic and that's part of the reason some of these x13 motors were failing so with the new ratings they're saying we may not be able to register them and i still have several pieces of equipment that i need to get rid of but um i did call my distributor and they said is that we can register them so i'm a little confused about that 454B. Um, well, here's the deal with 454B. I think um, train and carrier and there may be some others are going to start using the 454B and root and ream. I think they're going with R32 and it's this um. It's this global warming potential or GWP. The 454B has a higher rating, a higher potential, which means there's a possibility it could be phased out in the future. So Reem and Root are going with the lower one. Um, and they're not going to bring in the new refrigerants. They put it off for two more years. So um, we don't have to deal with that right away but it's coming yeah as soon as january of next year all the equipment being sold has to be rated for 0.6 inches water column and they're calling that 14 sear 2. so it's still 14 sear it's just got a higher static pressure rating forgive me i'm trying to read your comments A pipe doctor franchise. Oh my word. No, 
No, no, no, no, we ain't going that route. <clears throat> I um, I saw where he was actually trying to do something in South Carolina. I do feel this far south, the way you talk to people and the way you um, present yourself matters just as much as the quality of work you do. So um, I do believe that like there's a fellow that I used to watch, um, Steve Lab, Steve Lav. Now, if he came down here in the South and talked to customers like that, he wouldn't make it. But I understand that's normal up there. But down here, that's not. And when I watch him, I'm just shocked at the way he talks to people. Well, guys, it, it, it's good to see y'all logging on. I'm glad the sound is doing good. I got a little mic here to help improve the sound. Let me see. Yeah. Forgive me, I'm reading y'all's comments. <laughs> yeah. Steve Lab, I'm sure he's a great guy. And um, but yeah, that Bostonian way of talking to people, yeah, that ain't gonna float down here. <laughs> Mm. But yeah, the, the new regulations coming um, January has me wondering if I need to sell my equipment back to my distributor or if I need to um, try to install them as soon as possible. I've got one that I bought for my house and I'm not really worried about that one. That um, That's going to be a 20 seer inverter system and I hope to do that on the weekend probably the weekend after football season i'm going to install that one i've already done one and i've learned a lot of lessons about how to do them and using nylog and the better way to torque down your flare nuts stream yard yeah the comments do go by fast forgive me i've got a cord right in front of the comments From upstate New York to start, start a career in HVAC. Yeah, it is a little bit of adjustment coming down here. Um, I spent some time up north. Um, well, Maryland to me is up north. And I've, I've been in New York City. And the lack of eye contact in places like that. And the, um, the way that people talk to you. I know it's normal up there, but um, down here, it, it, it's kind of, we perceive it as rude. Eight years experience with install and new construction. Well, Eric, tech for 15 years. You know, I'm going to tell you, you don't have to be a tech for 15, 20 years to start a business. You just have to know what you're doing. And there's a time when, you, when you're a tech and when you're working where everything just clicks and you realize even if it's new equipment you haven't seen, you know how it works and you can work on it. Um, I probably had less experience when I started my business than most people do. But you don't have to know everything. You just have to be good at what you do, competent, willing to learn and know your resources for help and just go do it. You don't have to be perfect. You need to be able to read the manual. <laughs> we so polite down South. Oh, we have um, subtle ways of giving people um, a piece of our mind. Like if somebody tells you, well, bless your heart. That's a good way of saying, you know, go jump off a cliff. 
bring back the magnetic parts tray. Actually, I just put it back on my trailer. I had it on a window unit that I took apart and somebody was supposed to come get it and I was saving all those screws. So I got it back on my van now. Well, guys, years in the field, um, before I started the business, um, including duct work and installation and stuff like that, I'm going to say um, seven years. Yeah. And then I started working as a technician and going through tech school and working with different companies. And I was working as a technician. I don't know if this is going to be great for y'all to hear, but I was working as a technician when I started the business for probably five and a half years. That's it. And I just jumped in it. Um, I had the, I knew I could do it. And I knew I was doing better work than most of the people around town. So I just jumped in with both feet. I was kind of forced into the situation. The employer I had, I had my own state license. And I think he felt like I was some kind of threat or something. And um, he accused me of taking his customers and doing work on the side. So, and he fired me. So when that happened, I um I could either start a business or find a job with somebody else. And I was worried that having a state license, finding a job with somebody else was just going to lead to the same thing. So I just jumped in with both feet and started the business. I had no customers, no advertising. I wasn't in the yellow pages, no nothing. And I jumped in and rental companies really helped me get my start. The first couple of years, I probably didn't pay myself in total for two years, like $6,000. So that means I couldn't have done it without my wife working. And now my wife is retired and we're doing pretty good. But my wife is older than I am. She was close to the age of retirement anyway. And I ended up just telling her back in like 2016, just go ahead and retire. You don't need to work. Let me see this one. Are you going to go live? When I do house calls, am I going to go live? Probably not. No. Uh, that's something I would probably have to ask a customer about because there's a chance they could end up in the video. But yeah, if y'all are thinking about going into business and you've got the experience Is YouTube helping with my finances? Um, a little bit. The the income coming from YouTube, I basically put it towards tools. And y'all see I'm I buy tools a lot, but that's about what I, I make. Um income from YouTube can be anywhere from and I'll be honest because it's not a lot, like three thousand a month to five, six. I had one month where I had 2 million views in one month. Now that was a good one, but that's not normal. Normally, um, I get a quarter of that. Working for yourself for 50 years. Holy smokes. That's a long time to be in one job. Before I started working for myself, um, I didn't hold a job for more than two or three years. I would get a offer somewhere else that was for significantly more money. And I would go to that. And then the place I left would offer more to get me back. And I felt like, hey, if you're going to do that, why didn't you pay me good to begin with? But yeah, my YouTube income, I put towards tools and stuff. So it's just like a, a fund where I, I, I buy whatever I want. What business insurance company do I use? I use a um a local bin insurance company called IPG Insurance, and they shop out my insurance, my workers' comp, and my general liability with multiple carriers. In the last couple of years, I've been with the same carrier, 
but they shop it out every year to help get me a low price. So I stick with a local company and they shop out the more national companies. 69 and just started your business. I think I started my business when I was 40. My um my background actually starts in engineering and that was not a job for me. How often do you have to renew your C21? I don't know what a C21 is. Yeah, I started out in engineering. That didn't work. Um, I worked as an EMT for a short little while. Um, a dump truck driver, a heavy equipment operator. And then I actually worked on car air conditioners before I started working on home or small business air conditioners. I am, um, And I didn't like it because it's such cramped, tight spaces. And the work was kind of difficult so um i switched over to residential and light commercial and um the companies i worked with just loved me and but at the time i was billing out as much as four thousand dollars a day for one big company in town and i kept thinking you know i can do that for myself <laughs> i'm gonna cost you a fortune in tools now, you don't have to buy everything that I buy. Good morning, Anthony. A light bulb reflection. Yes, there is a bright white round light over here. I've got two um, fluorescent lights up above me, but I was trying to improve the light. I've got the camera off to the side here, and my screen's rather large. If I put it up here on the top, Y'all are going to be looking down on me a little bit. Yeah, it would go up here. Do you mind telling me what town? Oh, I don't care. Um, I work in Albany, Georgia, and most of my work is in Albany, and I work in Leesburg and some of the surrounding towns just a little bit. I actually don't go any further than like 30 miles outside of my shop unless it's really slow and then i may go as far as like 45 or 50 but during the summer it's albany or leesburg or i'm not taking it well thank you anthony thanks for telling me that oh it is good to get y'all on here somebody asked me about these hubcaps I don't know if y'all can see those very well, but those are Volkswagen hubcaps. Those are reproductions from war era Volkswagen hubcaps. It has like a workers party symbol with a VW emblem in the middle. I have a 1967 Volkswagen Beetle and uh, that's, it is a hobby, but it doesn't get a lot of my attention very much. Office is out of Ta Tallahassee, so it's Ashton. You do work in Albany from time to time. Albany is kind of in the middle of nowhere. There's no interstate going through it. There's no big, you know, sports reason to be here, like a lake or a good flowing river or the mountains or a beach. I mean, it's just right in the middle of nowhere. And that just happens to be where I ended up. How do you suggest getting an HVAC business up and started? An HVAC business happens to be um, a business that takes less initial investment than most businesses. Basically, you just need a van. It does not need to be fully stocked. You need software for your bookkeeping. You need, you need a good accountant and you need, I do have a good lawyer. So, um, and they help you get started, form your LLC or um, incorporate a business and get your insurance and 
I think I started when I started the business, I had a total of $12,000. I couldn't get a small business loan. The only loan I could get was for my van. And at the time I had a house payment, a van payment and two new car payments. So I was really jumping off the deep end, deep end, but we did it. And now my house is paid off. All my vehicles are paid off. Everything I own is mine. So all that money that I had in my house payment is going towards improving our house now. You want to know what kind of camera I use? I use a GoPro Hero 10 um, with just a regular lens on it. No, Rob, stop. No, we haven't had a population explosion. Like I said, we're kind of out here in the middle of nowhere. Um, Georgia, South Georgia, the economy down here is driven by agriculture. So we don't really have a big explosion of population. In fact, the city of Albany itself has shrunk. There has been a, a flight out of Albany. So the surrounding towns like Leesburg and Sylvester and maybe Dawson, they, um, they have seen a population increase. Well, Big O, thanks for telling me that. I'm glad y'all enjoy my videos. I have another one coming up today that um, I'm not sure if I fixed it or not. Let's just say it was working when I left. You were born in Albany. Albany is not a bad place. I appreciate Albany because um, it helped to give me a start in my business. Getting clients. You want to know about uh, Jimmy Landers? Is that what you want to know about? Um, you want to know about how to get clients? Um, well, the first part about getting clients for me was I would go to rental companies, knock on their door, give them a card, shake their hand and let them see my face. I was clean shaven at the time. And Several of them gave me a try. One of them was a really big real estate company here in town. And for like four years, they would not try me. And finally, I was able to get a meeting with a property manager, sit down with him, talk to him and say, hey, I do really good work and I'll work my butt off to keep your business. And from then on, I started getting business from them. And, and you know, this time of year, it might be one or two calls a week. But during the summer, that might be two, three calls a day. But yeah, rental companies and also home warranties, they help a little bit. I use them less and less. It seems like I, I make them mad because of my prices and they'll leave me alone and then they'll come back because they don't have anybody else. But um, yeah, Volkswagen hubcaps. Those are, yeah, those are Volkswagen hubcaps. I'm not sure if y'all can see. Can y'all see that emblem? That's a Volkswagen with the Workers Party emblem around it from World War II. And if you look at that Workers Party emblem, it kind of looks like a stylized swastika. But that's what that is. I'm not a Nazi, but I enjoy Volkswagen memorabilia. You get a lot of leads from Home Depot. Um, I haven't tried that. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Christian. Well, Jimmy, I am a man of, of faith. I'm more of a spiritual person. Um, let's just say there were 
things that happened to me in my past that made religion and church and just hearing some things about um, the Bible that kind of made me feel like I was sick, like something bad was going to happen. So uh, I relate spiritually in a way that most people don't. <laughs> yeah, it, it, my previous empl employer did let me go because of my license and maybe I should have kept it to myself, but it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because when he let me go, I started the business and um, that turned out to be one of the best decisions I made. It turned out really well. Trade school, any tips? If you can work while you're going through trade school, that way you're putting into practice what you're learning as you are learning it, it can help increase the pace of your learning. Um, I haven't completely changed from Makita to Milwaukee. Um, my 18 volt tools, most of them are still Makita and I still keep Makita stuff on the van. I still keep a backup impact. But the reason I started using the M12 stuff is because I wanted smaller tools, something that was light and small. And Makita is going to 40 volts, so their tools are actually bigger. You can't put just a five battery, five cylindrical battery battery on the bottom of a 40 volt tool. And if they're going to a new platform, I thought, well, I'm just going to try the M12. Well, thank you, Richard. Good to see y'all too. <laughs> yes, someone did claim the tool bag. Somebody locally came and got it. And I do have some other stuff. I could give away some nice stuff, but I had a bad experience with somebody on um, spamming my viewers saying, hey, you've won and sending some crazy text to them. Um, so I, if I give something away, I need to figure out a better way to do it than just commenting, like sending me an email or something like that. Yeah, I seen some of the crawl spaces. No, no impacts in them spots. No, I don't understand what you're saying. What type of licenses do I have down here? Um, down here, I have a conditioned air, non-restricted license. So that means I can do anything air conditioning um, from the largest commercial to the smallest, less than five tons. And um, I had a master gas license, which we needed to install at gas furnaces and stuff like that. But my local municipality here in Albany no longer requires that. They say it's covered by my conditioned air license. So basically, that's all I've got outside of like a NATE certification and the EPA. I have a state conditioned air non-restricted license. No oil. You talking about fuel oil in this area? Very little. In fact, down here in Albany, I have not seen any of it and there was a town Dawson and Cuthbert not far away some of them have fuel oil and recently the only fuel oil I worked on was um one that I ripped out and put in a heat pump well hello from Brazil I'm glad my videos helped Well, the, the M18, I have been a little bit, I don't have a whole lot of M18. I have the M18 um, vacuum and I have an M18 light, but most of my 18 volt stuff is Makita. My um, circular saw, my big sawzall, my grinder, my rotary hammer, 
of course I got other stuff here in the shop for vehicles that's all Makita so I haven't given up on Makita um, but I do like the M12 stuff the M12 stuff seems to be catering to the trades and I like that I got I had a Nate for a long time I had um heat pump certification gas furnace certification and of course with that comes the air conditioning and installers and all that stuff um and i still keep it up but i used to have a jacket with all that, those certifications on my sleeve it doesn't seem like anybody cares about that though no gas packs up up north i wonder how far north they go. Um, if you have your EPA, your employer is going to look at that and think, well, he's licensed to put gauges on the system and handle refrigerant. Um, if you can get a job and get some experience under your belt, um, another good employer will look at that favorably. Um, just having an EPA license, if that's all you got, they're just gonna look at that and say, hey, you can put gauges on a system. But try to get experience, put your hands on equipment and get experience. I'm gonna tell you some of the people I work for, I learned how to run a business and I learned how not to run a business. The last guy I worked for, um, is running his business into a ground. So I learned some from him and maybe what not to do, but um, I did learn. Yes, we have lots of crawl spaces. Yes, Root and Ream are very popular in, in my area, Rob. Um, there's a Root dealer and there's a Ream dealer. We have no train distributor here. So anybody who sells train, they have to have it shipped in. But Root and Ream are very popular. There's lots of it down here. Um, well, Joshua, the, the inverter heat pump I bought for my house is a 20 sear. And I do not intend to even put heat strips in it. And like I said, I'm probably going to do that after football season, probably the week of like the Army Navy game and um, get that installed in my house. I also need to um, re-insulate my ductwork. Basement nightmares. <laughs> I bet. Proud ring dealer. Um. Okay, the DR58, I, there is an update on the DR58. I just posted a video not long ago where it completely let me down. And two days later, I was contacted by Field Peace, and they're going to send me a new one and take mine back to look at it and figure out what went wrong. That DR58 had 11 hours on it, um, a new tip. So the sensor should have been good and that should have been a good leak detector. But yeah, they are going to send me a new one and take that one back. <laughs> new excuse to get away from the wife. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> um, trust me, football. What time is it? Football is coming up and by 12 o'clock, I will be at the house. The on the DR58, I did send it back not long ago because I broke the tip of it. It got caught in my door when I shut the door, so the tip just broke and I couldn't screw on a new filter. So I sent it back and oh my, just to replace the, the wand so I could screw on a tip, um, was nearly $200. And I thought I could have just bought a new one. I'm not anymore. I fell in love. HVAC is a good career. 
Oh, somebody's rooting for the Ducks. Um, oh, my. Y'all got that quarterback that came from Auburn. <laughs> but, yeah, and he's doing good, but he didn't do so good when he came down here to play Georgia. Issues with the Wi-Fi Honeywell's crapping out. Yes, I have had customers complain that they um, sometimes they won't connect to their Wi-Fi and they'll just go haywire or they have to go up to the thermostat and change it themselves. I have one customer who's convinced that the Wi-Fi thermostat is the problem, but she has a electric water sensor and it'll shut it off. And um, she's not understanding that. Oh, I may have to go back with a regular thermostat with her and just make it go blank when, uh, well, this one does go blank, but just make it go completely blank and um, give her a regular thermostat. Go Big Blue. Who's Big Blue? Are you talking about Michigan? Oh, yeah, Bo Nix. Yeah, Bo Nix has been lights out since that game. I don't think they have they lost another game. Um, down here, we hear all the time how great Alabama is, and people like me just get tired of hearing it. So what's happening to Alabama this year is just <laughs> – uh, that that's nice. They're not top dog down here right now. Um, you like the Ecobee thermostats, Solo Tech? Um, I install them if a customer buys them and they want me to install them. Oh, the my Apple Watch, I love it. The um the reason I bought it is because it's so rugged. The other day I was in the video that I'm going to post later on, probably when I get done with this on um, live stream. We um. I'm turning on the gas and I'm pressing my watch up against a brick wall and putting pressure on it. And this thing will not scratch. Oh no, I don't like Nest thermostats either. And sometimes I have customers want me to install them and they're at work. So I can't even configure the thing until they get home. We do have a lot of package units. Yeah, we do have a lot of package units on the ground. I imagine where it snows a lot, it wouldn't make a lot of sense to put a package unit on the ground. The orange mag light that I use, it's actually a Milwaukee that has replaceable batteries in it that I got at Home Depot. Hockey pucks. <laughs> yeah, a nest is a hockey puck. That's about what it's good for. Apple thermostat. I have not seen the Apple thermostat. The, the smart thermostats that I carry are those Honeywell T6 Wi-Fi thermostats. Most of the time, the customers seem to have a preference of their own. And um, I charge them by the hour to come out and install one, a minimum of, minimum of one hour. The M12 shears for, for PVC. Well, let me ask you on that. Is the blade thin where it can get damaged even though you use it like it's supposed to be used? Because I've got this ratcheting one and I use it just on PVC or maybe the seal type, just pure plastic, and the blade still gets buggered up. I think it's one of those on Uniweld PVC cutters. All the way from the UK. Hey, Mike. I imagine, is it about 8 o'clock over there? What time is it in the UK? Yes, that is one of these um, old Simpson meters. When I was a kid, uh, uh, maybe that dates me a little bit, but that, that was the top of the line meter that you could buy. That, that was the bee's knees. 3.30 in the UK. Huh. 
use those meters. I've, I've got the manual on this thing and I need to put batteries in it and just play around with it and see if I can figure it out. What systems do I not work on? Well, I'll try to work on anything I get called to. Um, right now I'm turning down jobs for chillers and stuff like that because um, it just it just takes more time than what it's really, I can't bill out for the time that I'm spending. When I'm answering calls, residential or like commercial, I average on a service call about $400. So for me to take a call that's going to last me four hours and it may be something as simple, I don't know, like a condenser fan motor, it's hard to bill out what that is worth to me. Oh, y'all have got some real snow. Yes, chillers, many times you do need two, two guys. I worked on chillers, the first company I worked in here in Albany. And I would travel as far as Valdosta and places to work on those. Well, guys, um, I appreciate y'all tuning in and... Y'all let me know if this is working okay. I've just got it sitting down right here. And um, maybe I can do something a little different with the light. And let me know if last time there was an echo problem with um, the room. And I'm hoping this microphone helps that out. What are my thoughts on UV lights? Um, what's the halo? The Remy halo. I like those. There's some others. Um, you have a good day too. Y'all see I'm fixing to sign off. I will keep up the streams. I got a video for you coming probably in just a little bit. But um, thanks for tuning in guys. And uh, I will catch y'all on the next one. It's been, been good talking to you. And I enjoy answering the questions. See y'all later. Thank <laughs> you.